Emma. Well, it certainly has been a while. <laughs> Hello and welcome back to Paleo O'Connell. Uh, first off, I just really want to apologise for uh, just how long it's been since my last video. Uh, things kind of got carried away. But now that we've found ourselves with quite a lot of time on our hands due to current circumstances, I think what better time to start doing these videos again. So in this episode we are going to be covering a rather spectacular and very interesting group of mammals known as proboscidians, otherwise known as the group of mammals that contains elephants, mammoths and some other examples that are even more bizarre and even more fantastical. Undoubtedly the most famous prehistoric proboscideans would be the mammoths. It's very easy to see why they are very iconic to look at, but also it's because we know so much about them. Given the fact that they went extinct only relatively recently, and we have actually found very well preserved specimens in permafrost, many with the desiccated flesh still clinging to the bones. They were also extremely widespread, with many different species of mammoth dominating the northern hemisphere. The woolly mammoth lived in a tundra environment, and it shared this landscape with many other bizarre and unique species, such as Elasmotherium, the woolly rhino, bison, and even types of northern hyena. Now these animals were undoubtedly grazers. They had large, thick teeth to chew up tough plant matter, and their massive tusks most likely would have been quite useful in digging up vegetation. And needless to say, they would have been a very effective deterrent to discourage any predators from trying to tackle a mammoth. And while many animals that they lived with would have posed little threat to an adult mammoth, with specimens reaching up to 4 meters tall at the shoulder, before mankind's arrival there was one natural predator that would have preyed upon mammoths. And that undoubtedly would have been Smilodon, the saber-toothed cat. These felines probably would have been opportunistic hunters that preyed upon weak or young individuals of a herd. However, a Smilodon skull has been found from a specimen that was believed to have weighed upwards of 400 kilograms. That far outsizes a modern lion or tiger. And in fact, it's pushing closer to the weight class of the hybridized animal, the liger. Now being domestically bred, ligers tend to have quite a lot of fatty tissue in them. Whereas the likes of a Smilodon would have been compact acted with huge amounts of muscle. And for an animal of that size, the possibility of an adult mammoth winding up on the menu is plausible. And what a spectacular sight that would have been, seeing one of these animals trying to tackle a fully grown mammoth. There were a few other species of mammoths other than the shaggy coated variety, such as the Colombian mammoth, a larger and quite less hairy species. And there were populations of dwarf mammoth species, some of which didn't grow any larger than a pony. The size of these animals is likely due to the environments they lived in, as many of them were in isolated ecosystems such as islands. Seeing as there wasn't enough space to support large animals, they simply evolved into a diminutive size. And although mammoths only went extinct relatively recently, it is still hotly debated on what was the exact cause of their extinction. The most widely accepted theory is that a rapidly changing climate eventually resulted in the loss of their habitat. And while it is still greatly debated, the likelihood of overhunting by humans is still very plausible and likely could have contributed to their demise. It's been recently theorised that certain populations of mammoth in fact had a different factor that contributed to their extinction, and that was genetics. In the case of mammoths isolated on islands, they simply didn't have a wide enough gene pool to sustain populations for more than a few generations before birth defects would start to show up. And unfortunately, it's very much possible that these species were simply inbred into extinction. There were many other different kinds of proboscideans outside of mammoths. The American Mastodon is one of the most famous examples, as well as being the inspiration for an awesome band name. But there were other far more stranger examples of proboscideans that existed way earlier in the Cenozoic, with the most distant example being the Myritherium. This mammal lived during the Eocene, and was believed to have lived a lifestyle very similar to a modern day hippopotamus. While certainly a strange and unusual animal, it's definitely easy to see the comparisons to its modern day cousins, such as the elephants. But give evolution a few million years to experiment and it's bound to come up with some weirdos. And that's exactly what we got with Platybelodon. This bizarre animal lived during the Miocene, and for a long time was nicknamed a Shovel Tusker. And it's pretty clear to see why. For many years, paleontologists believed it used this dentition to feast upon water plants in ancient swamps. And the simple reasoning behind this was because that's what it looked like it did. 
However, in the last two decades, theories have been put forward that perhaps these animals use their teeth in a very different manner. And with a few years of research, it is now believed that Platybelodon was actually a browser, using his teeth to scrape bark, twigs and leaves off of trees. There are many other strange examples of evolutionary adaptions amongst this family, such as Ambelodon and Dinotherium. But what is undoubtedly the most spectacular proboscidean has to be Paleoloxodon, otherwise known as the Straight Tusked Asian Elephant. This animal was an absolute colossus. Standing 5 meters tall at the shoulder and weighing close to a staggering 22 tons, this animal outsized even some of the largest of Cenozoic mammals, such as the Paraceratherium, a prehistoric relative of the modern day rhino that is yet another example of evolution gone absolutely wild. It's hard to think of any predator that would dare try and challenge a mammal of this size. In fact, to this day, the only predator that we believe hunted Paleoloxodon was in fact human beings. And what a spectacle they must have bore witness to. It's, it's really hard to try and imagine this thing trudging its way through the ancient Asian forests, but it must have easily been one of the most utterly mind-boggling experiences in history. And it's a prime example of just how unique and special this family of animals are. Proboscidians are definitely one of the success stories of the Cenozoic, having spread to most continents on the world, and with some species still being alive today, such as the Asian elephant and the African elephant. Incredibly diverse, bizarre and successful, they're a great example of how mammals have come to take over the world. And in the next episode we will be looking at another group of mammals, one equally spectacular but far more ferocious than these. But that is it for this episode, so if you have watched this, thank you very much, and I do apologise for the extremely long time it took to make this episode. But if you did enjoy this video, a like or a subscription is very much appreciated, and if there is any topics of paleontology that you would like to be covered in a future video, please let me know in the comments down below. But do please stay tuned for more prehistoric adventures to come, and in the meantime, take care.